Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. And also, welcome back to the reviewing table. It's been quite a while since we've done any reviews here at the table, sat down together and talked about knives and other gear. So uh, thanks for coming back and thanks for joining me here. Glad to be here myself. But we're not doing a review today. Today, as you see from the title of this video, we are talking about five awful features on five awesome knives. There's knives you'll love that as you get nitpicky, you look at little features on them and you go, man, I wish that wasn't there, or man, I wish they'd done this differently, or whatever. So I think you get what I'm trying to say by awful features on awesome knives. And today we're gonna to talk about five really great knives that have features that I just wish had been thought through a little better. The knife in my hand is not one of those knives. What we have here is the Benchmade Mini Griptilian wearing AWT scales in that cobalt blue really, really attractive. I really don't think there's any awful features about this knife right here. And you can find, I'll have the uh, website link down in the description. Uh, they sent me these scales to try out. I just wanted to show them to you. I think they're beautiful. And uh, they do improve the looks, obviously, of the knife. They make it feel a little more special, a little more unique. And the ergonomics are not really changed in any negative way that I've noticed so far. So I like them a lot. But we're not talking about this knife today. I just wanted to take a second to show it to you. What we are going to do is show you some knives, like I said before, that are awesome, but that have some features on them that I'm <laughs> I wish weren't there. So let's start off today with what I think is one of Benchmade's best offerings in recent history, and that is this right here, the Benchmade CLA. The CLA is one of their auto knives, the Composite Light Auto, uh, number 4300 there on the blade stock under the logo, as you can see there. This knife is a fantastic auto knife and really has set a standard, in my opinion, for what a knife, an auto knife ought to be, because it's a great size, it's light, it's fast, Everything about it is just what I want from an auto knife. The safety is fine. It's very, very aggressive, and you feel it's very positive, too. The deep pocket clip on it is terrific. Again, it's it's going to be a huge winner for Benchmade uh, this year and in years to come. This black version was the first one they released. They have one in sort of a, um, I don't know what they call it, but a different color G10. And they're going to release it in lots of other colors for in the future. I'm positive about that because this one is going to stick around. But what is the feature on this knife that I think is just not well done, <laughs> not well done. I said the safety was fine, but in a way it's not. What we have on that safety are actually some very sharp corners, and maybe you can't tell that in camera, but those corners right there on the edges here and on that side right there are actually quite sharp. Now that's good for getting a good purchase on the safety, which you wanna do, but given the fact that this is gonna sit in your pocket and you're probably gonna you know, fish around in your pocket with your hands for other things from time to time, it's likely that your hand is going to drag across that safety, and that's the experience that I've had. I have literally, like, sliced open my knuckle. Okay, not sliced it open, but got a pretty decent kind of stinging scratch on my knuckle from reaching into my pocket and dragging across that safety right there. That's happened a couple of times with this knife. So I would say that that feature right there, I wish they had spent just a little more time. I don't know how you would do it, obviously, because you want that to be nice and sharp, but to get those, just the sides of that, just a little less sharp, just so those corners are not so stingingly sharp, uh, that would improve this knife a little bit, and I wish that that feature were improved upon. But that's the Benchmade CLA and the one feature that I don't like about it. Moving on. I think I might as well leave it there. Moving on, another very great knife and one of my top fives, I think, from 2015, as I recall. This one right here, the Microtech Ultratech in the tri-grip texture. Fantastically aggressive. I love the fact that they've terraced that aggressive uh, texture here so that it rounds down around the, the outside of it. I've not done a review of this knife yet, but uh, maybe this is going to serve as a mini review. But uh, the, the tri-grip texture, as you see by looking at it, is extremely aggressive. It goes in there fairly deep. It's milled into that aluminum, and it's, it does the job that they intended it to do. We've got what is an aluminum scale here with that anodizing, and anywhere where it's not uh, milled out like this, it is feeling fairly slick. But this serves a job of giving you an extraordinarily good grip on that knife. So why is that a downside? Here is why that's a downside. Look at that pocket clip. 
all of that ultra aggressive texture goes right under the pocket clip and from the factory that pocket clip is very strong, very tight. So when you get this knife, if you decide to put it in your pocket, you're gonna shred that pocket in a matter of weeks, like destroy it. So how do you overcome that? Well, luckily Microtech has released an updated version of the Tri-Grip Ultratech where they did actually remove that texture from underneath the pocket clip, kind of like Spyderco did a long time ago with the Delica and Endura by having that little flat, which goes right underneath the pocket clip. Very well thought out, good job guys. However, there's still tons of them, like tons and tons and tons of them out there with different blade shapes and different colors and the handles uh, that have the Tri-Grip going all throughout. So if you find one that you like, most likely it's not going to have that flat underneath the pocket clip. I think they've only released that one in black so far, black and you know bright steel. So you know most likely if you're gonna buy one, it will have that aggressive grip underneath it. How do you fix that? Uh, if you just decide to take it on yourself, what I did was just carefully bend that out until it got to a level where the um, the retention was still good, but not super duper strong to the point that it tears my pocket clip. Now, I'm happy with it, and that's the Microtech Ultratech in Tri-Grip. Moving on, we're gonna try to keep this video going. This is kind of a twofer right here. Kershaw has come out with some great knives over time, and I love a lot of them, but there are two fantastic knives they've released that both have the same problem, so let's address it. Here's the Kershaw Skyline super popular knife. As you know, that pocket clip is reversible. It goes from tip down, hanging right, hanging out right there, to tip up. But look how high up that the the milling or the sorry, the drilled out and tapped area is for that pocket clip. If you were to uh, switch that pocket clip to here, that knife would literally stick out about that much from your pocket. Okay, nearly an inch. Around an inch, at least an inch. That's a lot. I do not want all that much knife flopping around outside of my pocket getting caught on stuff. I hate that idea. It's dumb. Kershaw Leak. Love, love, love this knife. Only if I carry it tipped down though, because once again, as you look at the position of those holes for the pocket clip, you are gonna have that sticking out of pocket at least that much. That is a lot and it, no way, I'm not, I wouldn't do it. I'm positive that, that will get caught on stuff, yanked out of my pocket, and I'll lose it. And that's why that the, the, the positioning of the pocket clip holes for tip up carry is just terrible. It's awful on these two knives, and uh, I wish Kershaw had thought through that just a little bit more. And again, it's an awesome knife, but I think that's one feature that's pretty awful. Moving on, there's a lot of things that uh, you think of when you think of the Recon series from Cold Steel, one of those things are, wow, it's a tough, tough knife. And it is. The triad, triad lock on it, um, the extraordinarily thick G10, extraordinarily grippy and aggressive G10 on that. Um, yeah, it, it's just a workhorse of a knife. It's, it's begging to get to work for you. But what it isn't really good at doing, once again, it's not good at writing in your pocket clip without destroying it, kind of like the Microtech Tri-Grip. But this one did it first and did it, did it worst, in my opinion. So that extremely aggressive G10 goes all the way under the pocket clip, and it comes with two pocket clips, so you can have one on this side or on that side, and they both curve around. Uh, it's just, it's nasty how, how grippy it is. And so sliding that into pocket without making any modifications to it just like I said, shreds your pocket. Why couldn't you, Cold Steel, have created a little flat right there? Why couldn't you have done that? I don't know why you couldn't have. I, it seems like you could have. I mean, you've got a pre-programmed milling going on here anyway. You know this isn't all being done by hand. So if you're gonna have this sort of done pre-programmed, why couldn't you give us a little flat right there that would help us preserve our pockets and be able to carry this knife in that pair of pants we love so much for that much longer. And once again, Spyderco did it right on the Delica and Dura and so forth, having a little flat there with very aggressive texture and molded in um, uh, texture into the handle, but they provided this little flat for the pocket clip to pr help you preserve your pants. And you could have done that, Cold Steel. I'm pretty sure you could have. I don't, I don't understand your manufacturing processes, but I think you could have done that. The way to fix that, if you buy this knife, this is the Mini Recon 1. Uh, same problem exists on every other version of it. 
The way to fix that is simply to detach the pocket clip, get some sandpaper or a Dremel or something like that, and just go to town under there until that's fairly smooth, until it gets to the point that you like it and that it goes in and out of pocket pretty smoothly, and yet has the retention you want, and that's the fix that you're gonna go for. All right, last but not least, two fantastic knives, which are kind of the same knife in a way. We're talking about the RAT Model 1, Randall's Adventure Training Model 1, and the RAT, yep, Model 2. There it is. Fantastic little knives, affordable, fast, good steel, lightweight, uh, good construction on them. Uh, just a brilliant design, really. Uh, Four-way repositionable pocket clips on both of them. Just very squared away, very well thought out knives altogether. So what is the one feature on the RAT 1 and the RAT 2 that I think is bad, that I think they should have thought a little more about, maybe done differently, is this. You see that scale? It looks a lot like what? Looks a lot like G10, doesn't it? There's the bird turn, looking very, very similar in texture. So why isn't it actually G10? Why isn't it actually G10? They saved a little money, sure, I'm sure they did, but I would have paid five, maybe 10 bucks more to have actual G10, and look, Bird Turn, really inexpensive knife. Honestly, I'm not sure where you can get this anymore if it's still out there, but here's a Bird, uh, what is it again? Bird Raven. Also G10, also pretty affordable, okay? Good construction, good quality. You can get G10 for not a lot of money. I mean, Kershaw does it all the time. Bird knives do it all the time. You can get G10 for not a ton of money. And you could have put that on here. Guys, Randall's Adventure Training, people who are currently making this knife, you could have put G10 on there and it wouldn't have cost that much more. So that is the one thing, again, what might be kind of a stretch because it's a very good knife anyway. But if it did have G10 on there, I'm not talking about the assisted one. I know that's out there. I've heard that's G10. But I wish this plain, you know, just standard version of it had G10 on it. That would make this knife so much sweeter, in my opinion, and just darn near perfect in every way. All these knives are great knives. That's what I said at the beginning. Awesome knives with a couple of awful features. Or how do I phrase it? Five awful features on five awesome knives. And anyway... Those are the features that I was talking about, and those are the awesome knives I was talking about. And I thank you very much for sticking around and watching this video. Tell me if you agree with these features and the, the comments I've made. Can you live with it? Do you think I'm making a bad point, and a moot point, whatever? Also, tell me about some knives that you love that have some features that you hate. I love to hear about that. Once again, thanks very much for watching. I'm the Late Boy Scout. We'll see you later. The next knife I want to talk about is the Kershaw Blur. Now, I don't actually have a Kershaw Blur anymore. I got rid of both of them. That's how much I don't trust that knife. And yes, this is the knife that had a mechanical failure.